All right, good day everyone. If you're uh, watching this on the recording, um, I'm Anthony Maranak. This is the third of our uh, tutorials on legal research and the resources available to you through the CQ Uni uh, databases. And um, if you have nothing to do with CQ Uni but you're watching this anyway, then you can still learn some great research skills and no doubt your university has access to similar databases. In this section, we're going to talk about encyclopedias and journals. So we've already looked at statute, we've looked at case law. Um, this is about materials that are not those primary materials of law. So when we refer to secondary materials, this is what we're talking about. So this is where somebody else has done some thinking and some interpreting, and you're going to uh, you're going to come onto the back of that. Um, so I'll begin, I'll share screen and I want to start by showing you the two databases that you absolutely must know, okay? Some of you are probably second or third year students and probably don't know about these databases and if you're one of those, then I promise you, your entire world is about to change in the next five minutes. That, that's how important these are, okay? The first one is on the LexisNexis AU database, which is available to you through your CQ Uni account. And it's this one, Halsbury's Laws of Australia. Halsbury's Laws of Australia is the most immensely useful database in the whole world because they've taken basically the entire law of Australia, they've categorised it and explained it. And you can see these sections. Every type of law you could possibly imagine is in there and broken down. So we're going to pick one at random. We're going to pick negligence for those of you who've done torts. We open up the tree. And you can see how neatly and beautifully it's divided up into all of the bits that you would have done when you did torts in negligence. We're going to look in duty of care. General principles of duty of care. See how easily it is to work your way down and it talks about the general common law position. Click on that. Let's have a look at what it says. First thing it tells you is who actually wrote this stuff. You can see that Associate Professor Rolf wrote this from the Faculty of Law at the University of Sydney. Now, um, every single bit of Halsbury's is written by somebody at least as eminent as this. Okay, so this is, if you've been getting stuff off lawstudent.net, why on earth have you been getting stuff off lawstudent.net when you can be coming onto Halsbury's and getting simply written, well-explained material from a database by genuine um, academics who know what they're on about? So, principles for the duty of care. Here we get our general common law position. It's explained in quite simple language. Okay, the defendant cannot be held liable unless he or she owed to the plaintiff a duty to take reasonable care to avoid causing the plaintiff damage or loss. Very simple. Now, what it does underneath that, it gives you all of the case law. So if you're finding, if you've got a, a subject uh, or a question that you've got to answer about duty of care, you jump onto Halsbury's, first thing it does is says, hey, Here's how duty of care works. This is simple, isn't it? The second thing it says is, oh, by the way, <coughs> here's a bunch of cases you can go look at. And you can see straight away, it's all the great ones. Okay, the wool and underwear case. Um, the, uh, the, the case about the dude who, for some reason, didn't change his underwear for, for weeks. Um, you can see Donahue and Stevenson, which we all know is the famous snail in the bottle case. Chapman and Hearst is in there. You can see all of the good stuff. It's all available, it's all printed and, sorry, it's all laid out for you. It tells you every case that you're going to need to read and only the important cases. It gives you pinpoint references within those cases. So all of the students who said to me, but it's so hard when you get a case that's 150 pages. Well, I'm not going to read 150 pages. I'm going to jump on a Halsbury's and it's going to tell me go to page 235, Anthony, and that's what I'm going to do. And I'm going to read that page. 
and maybe the head note. Okay, so Hallsbury's has thousands upon thousands upon thousands of these entries. Okay, and they break it down and they give you hundreds upon hundreds of references for each of them. Okay, I shudder to think how many references there are in Hallsbury's overall. If we go into contract, okay, this is an area that obviously that I teach that many of you will have run into me before. Formation. If you have a look at that, there's the first few weeks of your Contracts A course. Offer and acceptance, open that up. Proof of acceptance. We're gonna go have a look at the, uh, at the um, see if we can find, Ah, here we are, sorry, further down, we've got communication of acceptance. We're gonna go and find the postal uh, acceptance rule. So there we are, postal acceptance rule. We can click on the plus and take that even further down. We'll have a look at the operation of the postal acceptance rule. Under the rule, acceptance is effective immediately upon posting a properly prepaid and addressed letter communicating the acceptance. And there you go, there's the cases, Adams and Linsell. Those of you who did contracts with me will remember Adams and Linsell, and there's three or four more others that you can have a look at at the same time. This is incredibly easy. It's an incredibly easy way to get your head around any area of law. <laughs> well, you need textbooks because they're a great way for academics to make some extra money. Uh, <laughs> honestly, Hallsbury's tells you just about everything you need to know to get started. What it doesn't give you is a massive amount of depth, okay? But if you want to understand the general principles of an area of law and how they work and how they relate to each other, this is how to do it. From now until the end of your degree, every week of every subject, for everything that you learn, you should be jumping on Hallsbury's to see what it says because it will give you another way to understand in fairly simple terms how to break this law down. That's Hallsbury's. Now, if, if I haven't changed, the, some of you, if I haven't changed your lives in the last five minutes, then uh, um, I will spend the rest of my life playing Pokemon because clearly I'm a failure as an academic. I'm gonna, uh, we have a wag here who says I'm gonna do that anyway, which, um, would be quite insulting if it wasn't also kind of true. Um, now, next thing we're going to do is jump back onto Westlaw. Those of you who've watched the other two uh, tutes tonight um, will have already run into Westlaw. For those of you who are watching this one for the first time, it's on the, uh, the CQ Uni databases. Westlaw has an incredibly useful encyclopedia called, creatively enough, The Laws of Australia. The Laws of Australia is basically another version of Hallsbury's. So you can see down the left there, we've got all of our different areas of law. Aborigines and Torres Strait Islanders, administrative law, civil procedure, criminal offences, equity, evidence, family law, labour law, restitution, torts, you name it, it's in there. Okay, exactly the same sorts of tree. So let's go back to contracts. Okay, contract, general principles. We open up the tree, formation. Offer an acceptance, see if we can track down the uh, um, postal acceptance rule again. Now I can tell you I didn't rehearse this, so I'm, I'm looking for this um, the same way that I would if I was actually researching, communication of acceptance. And there we are, the postal rule. So we open that up. The postal rule under which acceptance and thus a contract is complete on the proper posting of a letter of acceptance. So, we scroll down and it's got 
the same sort of explanation. It's got all of the footnotes referring to all of the cases. Okay. Um, which one is better? Laws of Australia or Horsbury's? To me, that's like people arguing about Holdens and Fords. There's really not that much difference between the two of them. Um, it's really a matter of personal preference and what you find most comfortable. Personally, I use Hallsbury's more often than I use Laws of Australia, but I know other people who swear by Laws of Australia and who very rarely uh, use Hallsbury's. Um, you will become most familiar with one or the other just as a matter of personal preference, but you really need to learn how to use both because sometimes you might jump onto Hallsbury's and it might be helpful, but it might not be targeted in quite the way that you want. And so a good thing to do can be to then go and jump on the Laws of Australia. For both of Hallsbury's and Laws of Australia though, one thing I've got to say is that practice makes perfect. And so the more that you jump onto these things and just go wandering around them, I mean, they're available to you 24 seven through the library website anyway. Jump on, have a wander around and a look through them and you'll start to get more and more skilled at tracking down exactly what you want. Um, and you'll start to learn their little quirks. So for instance, um, back in Hallsbury's, you'll find that there's a section called torts, but there's also a section called negligence quite separately from the section called torts, even though negligence is a tort. So you start to learn just how they break these things down a little bit differently uh, from one encyclopedia to another, but both of them are immensely, immensely useful. Next thing I want to look at in terms of encyclopedias is on a, a third database that we haven't looked at in any of the tutorials that have run tonight, and that's a database called CCH. Now, CCH doesn't have a great number of um, statutes and cases, which is why we haven't talked about it tonight, but CCH is really great when it comes to these secondary materials. Everything is organised in terms of practice areas because CCH is targeted towards practitioners. Practitioners use CCH an awful lot. Okay, so it's, uh, it's not set up for students, it's set up for practitioners, but it's still immensely helpful for students. So let's take family law as an example. We click open family law, we make the helpful window go away. And we've got this thing here called the Australian Master Family Law Guide. So this is an encyclopedia on family law. So if you're studying family law that in the, either now or in the next couple of terms, tonight's your lucky night. You'll see that family law is broken up into the various areas that you're likely to come across. Children is obviously the area of most dispute. And here we are. We've got this concept of shared parental responsibility. Now, any of you who've done um, family law have learned all about shared parental responsibility. Principles the court must consider. Now these are the sec, what they call the section 60 CC factors. Okay. Principle the court must consider. Consider the child's needs and the impact of the proceedings. It then explains that in very simple terms and gives you footnotes that will send you off to find out more. Where there are relevant cases, it will give you those relevant cases. So through CCH, you've got a bunch of data, sorry, a bunch of um, encyclopedias that are focused more on individual, um, individual areas of law. What that means is that when you start a new term, one of the things that you want to do is jump onto um, CCH and find out whether or not there's a CCH publication, <coughs> excuse me, find out whether there's a CCH publication in the area of law that you're studying. Um, those of you who are joining us and who are watching and who are not part of the Bachelor of Laws program, but who are doing some of our um, 
law subjects through the uh, the business school and commerce degrees, you'll see that this is going to be really useful to you because there's entire sections on business law and company law, um, and those are going to be immensely helpful to you guys. So that's um, CCH. I want to move on now from talking about encyclopedias and start talking about how you find journals. If you have any ambitions of studying um, to do honours or if you have any ambitions of going on and doing a higher research degree such as a master's degree or a PhD, you will need to know how to find these journals. But even if you're not, even if you're just studying, it can be immensely helpful to find articles that have been written about the specific topic that you're looking at because they provide another voice and another way to explain that same material. If there's a case and you're struggling to understand that case, but somebody out there has written an article on that case, how useful is it, how immensely helpful is it to open up a journal article and see what they reckon about it? Or how useful would it be to open up a journal article and find that, hey, they're talking about three later cases that developed this case. Okay, so you can see useful research tool. So how do we do it? First thing we're going to look at is a website called Trove. Okay, Trove is run by the National Library of Australia um, and it provides, it's like a, it's like a combined catalogue of books, journals, artworks, all sorts of amazing stuff that's available through libraries in Australia. So the National Library, um, the uh, state libraries, the university libraries and all sorts of private libraries. Now, a lot of the material is online. A lot of it is not online. Um, but even if you find stuff that's not online, you at least then know what you're looking for. The main thing I like about Trove is that it's got an incredibly useful resource that virtually nobody knows about, which is called the Online Digital Thesis Database. Every single thesis that has been submitted for about the last 20 years for a master's degree or a PhD in Australia in every field of university study is available through Trove full text. Okay, so if I search, I'll do a vanity search. If I search Maranac and Law, it comes up. Comes up with, under books, there we are. So it comes up with my master's thesis, which is available to view online. Okay, so you can view that. Waiting, waiting, waiting. Okay, and so you can see there that it gives you a, um, uh, the uh, abstract and then you can download the whole thing uh, as a PDF. Now just imagine the number of law theses that have been submitted around all of the law schools in Australia in the last 20 years or so, all of those are available to you for your own research free of charge, okay? This is not a CQ Uni website. This one's just out there on the internet. Next one I want to teach you about is the Social Science Research Network. SSRN is brilliant. SSRN is based on the idea that information should be freely available. Okay, that you shouldn't have to pay immense amounts of money to database managers in order to get your hands on information. SSRN goes well beyond um, the law, goes into all different areas of social science, but if you look down the left there, you will see that uh, the law has its own section. Click on the law. And what you will find is that you can then um, run searches we can run searches through the entire library, um, but once you sign in, uh, you can run searches within the law section and it brings up uh, an immense number. I think there's oh, somewhere in the order of 100,000 legal papers um, on all sorts of topics 
and most of them most of them are available uh, full text. A lot of them are American, so sometimes you have to be a bit cautious about applying them in Australia. Um, but you just add Australia as a search term, and you'll pick up Australian materials. Let's look at some of the stuff that's available through your um, CQ Uni. First thing we'll do is go to Lexis.com. Now we've met this database previously this evening. Lexis, sorry, Lexis.com is the uh, American version of what we have in Australia is the Lexis Nexus database. And when it eventually comes up, you'll see that um, over on the left here, you've got secondary legal. If we open up secondary legal, now we're still we're sort of staying within the United States at the moment. If we go to US law reviews and journals combined, that gives us the, the opportunity to search full text on virtually every university law journal in the United States of America. So if we say rape and hearsay, that'll give us every article in any law journal in the United States that mentions the words rape and hearsay. So if you're doing an evidence law assignment where you're looking at the laws of hearsay and whether or not they make it more or less difficult to achieve a just outcome in a rape case, here's a whole bunch of resources for you. And you can just look at um, the titles here, the admissibility of extrajudicial rape complaints, a feminist critique of the excited utterance exception to the hearsay rule. Lots of these things, once you've studied some basic Australian evidence law, you'll see that actually lots of these American articles are traversing the same sort of ground, the same sorts of questions that we look at in Australian policy. Let's go back to the main Lexis uh, screen. We'll go foreign law. Because as far as the US is concerned, Australia is a foreign country. Open up. And Australian law journals combined. So you can search on an immense number. We'll run the same search. You can search on an immense number of the Australian journals through Lexis.com. Okay, so you can see that it's come up uh, with um, bunches of stuff there from places like the Australian Bar Review, the Sydney Law Review, uh, Torts Law Journal, Australian Journal of Family Law. So you can see there's, a, there's an immense number of materials that have come up. These are all articles that have been written uh, by academics for academic law journals that may help you to understand topics that you're studying uh, through your substantive degree. But there's more. Let's push on even further. Let's have another look at West Law. That's another one that we encountered earlier on this evening. Jump into West Law. And what you'll find, if you click over here on the left, you'll find journals. And you have the opportunity to search. Or over here on the left, you can just scroll down and you can see all of the journals that are available to you through your Westlaw subscription. Um, Westlaw is probably more helpful when you're trying to track down a particular article. So if there's an article that you know is in the Australian Law Journal, then Westlaw and using its browse process is the best way to find it. But what you can see is that Westlaw really is only um, uh, indexing for this subscription is only indexing about 15 um, journals. So that's probably not as helpful 
uh, as Lexus.com for our purposes, but know that it's there. Now there's some that you probably won't have come across unless you've previously been um, an arts or an economics student. And there's two in particular that I want you to know about. The first one is called APA Full Text, which stands for Australian Public Affairs Full Text. Now, this is not a law database, okay? This is a database that is focused on the humanities generally, but it includes a lot of material from areas that, that connect with the law. So um, fields like political science, for instance, fields like sociology, fields like criminology. Um, and so let's run that same search, rape and hearsay. Okay, so we've only got one there, but you can see that the Australian Law Journal is indexed in this database. And if you're looking to do an assignment on rape and hearsay, well, how useful is that article going? We don't even need to open that article to see how useful that article is going to be. Let's be a little less picky with our search term, though. Let's just search on hearsay. 170 results on hearsay from a um, database that's uh, not even not even a law database. Okay, and you can see that once we obviously there were, at the start there there was a a regular column from the big issue magazine called Hearsay. But once we get past that, you can see that we're looking at um, genuine, uh, legally relevant articles, the Law Institute Journal, Australian Law Journal, Criminal Law Journal. Okay, so here is a, a database that you've never heard of that indexes a whole bunch of these materials that are relevant to law study. The final one I want to look at, and... Um, I'll do so fairly quickly because I noticed that we've just hit nine o'clock, so I'm about to turn into a pumpkin. Um, is called JSTOR. Okay. Like APA full text, JSTOR is much broader than, um, than just the law. But JSTOR is probably just about the biggest database in the world in terms of academic materials. So... Some of you, by the way, some of you might have noticed that I do this weird thing where when I'm doing um, searches using Boolean terms, um, I always capitalise the Boolean term. So rape and or, or or near or whatever Boolean term I might be using. Um, I just find it's easier to, to see logically what I'm trying to do with the search when the search term itself is in lowercase and the Boolean operator is in uppercase. Um, Absolutely not necessary to do it that way at all, but uh, it works for me. So if you're finding it helpful as you watch on, it might be something you try as well. So here we are. We've ticked that and we've got 364 uh, articles from right around the world uh, that refer to both rape and hearsay. And so this is interesting. We've got one here that's talking about rape law in 18th century Massachusetts, probably not helpful for your criminal law assignment right now. But if you get to, um, if you get to do honours and you're looking for a historical perspective, if you're taking a feminist perspective and providing a feminist critique of the experiences of rape victims giving evidence before common law courts, there's absolutely no reason why the experience of rape victims in 18th century Massachusetts might not be useful to the argument that you're making. Um, but if we go down, look, there's material here you can find out about how rape is dealt with in the courts in Kenya, okay? So in terms of your research capability, in terms of the ability that you have to get stuff on a topic, on a legal topic that you want to know more about, JSTOR is incredibly useful, okay? And as you can see here, again, these are key American um, university law journals that are indexed to JSTOR. So if you don't find these things on Lexus.com, there's a very good chance that you're going to find them on JSTOR. Now, I'm going to stop sharing the screen for a moment. I realise that um, for uh, many of you, uh, this has been um, 
uh, this has been uh, like drinking from a fire hose because I've thrown an absolutely massive amount of information at you in the last couple of hours and there's no way that people will have been able to take it in effectively uh, because I've, I've, I've been at this game now for 20-something years and I've tried to um, refine as much as I could of that into uh, two hours. But can I say that practice, practice, practice is everything. Jump onto these websites and just set yourself a topic and try and find stuff. Try and see what you can find. And the more that you play with them, the easier it will be. Uh, and pretty soon um, you, you find that you've learned most of it and you're just sort of learning extra little bits that make things easier along the way. Um, now, Jamie, you have a question. Go for it. So I've got a couple if that's cool. Um, once we get into practice, do we, do we have to subscribe to these? And if you, if you do, do you know how much they roughly cost, the subscriptions to these databases? Um, once you get into practice as a solicitor, it's very likely that your firm will have a subscription for these databases and that you won't need to do so yourself. Uh, if you go into practice as a, um, as a barrister, uh, then yes, you will need to get subscriptions to these. But by the time you're ready to go to the bar, um, you will already have a very clear understanding in your own mind of which of these resources you uh, you prefer to use and which of them you don't. So you can then negotiate a pretty good package uh, with the providers. And all of these databases and more of them are available to um, practitioners through the Supreme Court libraries. Uh, so, for instance, even here in Rockhampton, there's the, the Supreme Court library in the court building that has a computer attached to the Supreme Court network from which practitioners can get access to all of these databases. But if you want to be able to do it from your own office and if you're a barrister, then um, you have to stump up the dough. Uh, and we're talking about thousands of dollars a year. Um, so they are, they are expensive, but if you, know what you, if you know what your priority ones are, um, then they're jolly well worth it. Um, does that help, Jamie? Yeah, that's very helpful. Thank you. And um, the last question I had, sorry, sorry to interrupt. Um, you're searching journals. Um, is it possible to sort them so that they're either scholarly or non-scholarly? Just so you know which ones to actually cite in essays? Well, uh, what you'll find is that if you use, um, if you use the Lexis.com database, um, then they're pretty much all going to be scholarly. Um, when you start using the databases that you're less familiar with, the first thing is that you'll develop an understanding pretty quickly of which are the scholarly uh, journals. If you come up against an article that's from a publication that you don't recognise, uh, then the best thing to do is just jump on Google, go have a look at the, um, at the website for that uh, publication. And in particular, click on the link that they will have on each individual publication website, um, which is it's, it'll all say something like for contributors or something like that. So it'll be the, the page that's addressed at people who are trying to get published in that journal. And you'll see from there that, you know, if they start talking about the submission of free copies so that it can be double blind refereed by other academics, well, you know that you're talking about a fair income academic journal at that point. So, you do have to do a bit of sleuthing. Um, I'm not aware of any database that says this material is the good material and this material is the crap material because as far as the database preparers are concerned, if, if they thought it was crap material, they wouldn't put it in the database. So um, you, you, do have to, you do have to get a bit sort of sleuthy, but again, the more practice that you, uh, that you do, the easier it gets. Well, thanks, Anthony. Appreciate it. No problem. Now, does anybody else uh, have any uh, any questions that you want to fire at me before we call it quits for the night? Okay. Well, this this database, uh, sorry, this uh, database, this recording, um, along with the other two this evening, uh, will be um, probably placed in a couple of places available um, to you. And if you're watching one of these recordings, and I haven't answered the question that 
you want to ask. Um, my email address is anthony.marinac, which is M-A-R-I-N-A-C, at gmail.com. Um, please feel free to email me with your questions uh, and preferably with promises of either Freddo Frogs, Caramello Koalas or um, Jim Bean Bourbon. Uh, and um, I'll get straight back to you. Um, generally speaking, the quantity of the bourbon influences the speed with which I'll get there. No, just kidding. Um, if I get a million emails from people asking questions about these things, I'm not going to get back to you straight away. And obviously, I'm going to preference my own students first and then CQ Uni students over any of you out there who might be at other unis. But uh, please don't hesitate to give me a shout um, if this has been useful to you. Uh, and if there's anything more that you'd like to know. And um, uh, Jamie, uh, who just asked those two questions, has just reminded everybody that I'm also deeply addicted to Coke Zero. So uh, uh, bribes in the forms of Coke Zero are also very happily accepted. Um, on that cheery note, I'm going to uh, end the recording and uh, say good luck to each of you. Uh, and I hope that, uh, that these three sessions tonight um, have been helpful and will help you in the rest of your degree and in your practice as lawyers.